Hi everyone, Doug Corbett here again, and today in this video we're going to be looking at glob terminology. Now, I've mentioned it in my previous video, so really I just want to go over that uh, and show you not only where it can be used, but a few of the different ways it can be used too. Chances are, if you've seen a demo with myself or, or one of my colleagues here in the UK office, you'll have seen using the uh, the star to denote all, or either all devices or groups, but there's a lot more to it than that that you can do, and there's certainly a lot more uh, power you can get from using glob terminology. So let's take a look, see the sorts of things we can do. I'll try and highlight a few use cases as well as we go. So as I've opened creating a dashboard, I'm going to have a separate tab open just to make sure I can uh, reference things and make, check things as I go. Uh, but let's just add in another widget. We're going to add a knock widget and I'm going to call this one just uh, group health. So what this is going to be looking at is it's going to be looking at the health of our device groups. So let's just add them all in. So we're going to be using that star, as we mentioned, just to add in all of everything. Device group, group by device group, yeah. I'm going to give it four columns just so we can actually read what the names of things are. Um, so here we can see we've got our groups, but there's something a bit off about this. And if I look at the device tab here, you'll be able to see what it is. So heading to the top here, what we've got is, for example, set utility groups has then a bunch of other subgroups in it, uh, and there's no way of telling what's in, in which group. So I'm going to be doubling up on a lot of, of um, groups here. So you've got set utility groups, which has that. And then you've got the collector group there, which is also in that it has that same alert. So there's a lot of wasted sort of space here, a lot of superfluous information. So what I want here actually is I want to bring in just the top level groups in my device tree. Now this could be useful if I want to see uh, if my you know, device tree is grouped by location or by customer if I'm an MSP and I want to see the top level um, group. So I see the customer's environment or the physical location uh, and the alerts on that site, but I don't see the subgroups. So let's see how we can do that. Well, to do that, we're going to go into the configuration of it. We're going to change that star. And we're going to use an exclamation mark. And then an exclamation mark is like the star, it does anything, but it's a negative search pattern. So it matches anything that doesn't have the following. So that's going to be uh, so negative search pattern star slash star. And what that's going to do is it's going to, because the stars, stars are filling in any number of characters there, it's going to bring any group that does not have a forward slash in its name there. So let's save that. Save and close. And there we have each of the top level groups. You can take it a stage further as well. So if it's uh, within a, a, a customer's group or something, you can, you can do a very similar thing there. So here I'm going to start typing for the MSP because we've got an MSP group there. And I'm going to forward slash because I want the subgroups within that. And then I want this term. So it's going to bring in each of the groups within the MSP customer, but none of their subgroups. So let's try that. And there it is. And if we want to just check that, we can hop over here, open up the MSP group, and yeah, we've got these four groups, but we've not got any subgroups from them. So that's some sort of generic, um, all-encompassing negative search patterns. You can do a few other things as well. So let's let's take a close look at these. I'm just going to combine a few different glob terms together in a custom graph widget. So this is going to be uh, Ethernet's ports in MBPS. So let's create this then. I'm going to do all devices, but I'm going to bring in specifically the status alert enabled data source. You might not have that. That's a, a fairly new one, so it might need to be imported into your account, which I'll cover on another video. Uh, but what we'll see if we hop in quickly to our networking group, uh, take a look at our NX switch, for example, we've got this interfaces separated data source group, and then there's that. So it's looking at the, the where they've got the alerts enabled. And we've got quite a few in there, which is why I picked this group. Um, so for the instance, I'm going to start using some a bunch of glob terminology here. So I'm going to put Ethernet, and I'm going to put a question mark, which actually matches any single character. So if I look at my Ethernet, so you can see I've got Ethernet 1 slash 1 or slash 2 and so on. And I could have 2 slash 2, and this would be brought in by this question mark as well. But then you see these, we've got these 103, 
104, etc., they won't bring in because that because it's more than one character. Um, so if I do forward slash, it's an anything with a single character before that forward slash. Um, I could put a star there if I wanted to bring all of them in or, or whatever, but I've got the forward slash there. And then I just want to bring in the ports one to three. And I can do that with these square brackets here. I could either type one, two, three, or I could type dash three. So one up to three. Um, and you can do that with letters as well. So it could be, you know, disks that you've gotten lettered A through F. You could do A to F in there. So that'll bring in uh, just those. And let's bring in in megabits per second. So if that label it accordingly, BPS and scale by 20, 10, 24 because it's bad with usage. Okay, that's uh, going to be everything for that. As you can see, we're bringing in three lines. We've got the red, green, blue, and it tells us exactly what we're looking at. That Cisco and X switch, just those three ports. Now let's say I, I wanted to look at those because those are the uh, sort of ones that are most important for the network, and uh, and I want to see them separately, or maybe they're they're going to have a lot more data going through them, and so they're going to skew the graph. In fact, that's what's going to happen. You can see this one at the bottom here is hard to read because it's very little in. Um, so if I configure this as clone it, um, and let's call this one lower bandwidth. So it's just using le less. Uh, and let's just edit this. Now I'm just going to invert this search here by putting this symbol in here, sort of an output putting chevron called a carrot. And so that's uh, saying anything that's not in that range, one to three. Save that. And there we go. So as with the bottom line on this, the 1-3, uh, the port 1-3, you're getting, it's very low, very hard to read. Whereas on this, you can actually see what's going through. You can see it's a very minimal number, but you can see what's going through. So because I've got a uh, much higher bandwidth usage on these ports, I would probably want to keep them separated so that they don't obscure the others. Now, as with any other system like this, we do have extensive documentation on it, so do take a look at that. You can see there's some stuff that I just haven't covered on here, but it's just to give you an idea that actually there is a lot more you can do with glob terminology than just saying star is all. Um, so do take a look at that. You can do negative search patterns, you can do positive ones, um, and a few other things besides there, and it shows you examples of how to use it. And of course, if you have any questions or anything, do get in touch via the email address at the bottom of the screen.